as it pertains to um, various topics uh, mm -hmm. that concerns us on a day-to-day -day basis. And like is our custom, you know, we, we would always invite uh, men, pastors, and other personnel who are capable to, you know, give discussion on these um, topics that we would choose from time to time to discuss. Uh, today, my friends, we will be discussing uh, the topic, the Christian and finance. The Christian and finance. And with us in studio today, uh, we have two capable men, you know, men of experience. Um, they would be, you know, facilitating the discussion as we go through today's um, topic, the Christian and finance. And with me today, to my immediate right, left, sorry, is none other than the man himself, Pastor Enoch Isaac. He's a ministerial secretary of the Grenada Conference, along with other portfolios, and also he is the district pastor in the Eastern Two District of Seventh-day Adventists. A good day, Pastor Enoch. How are you doing? Good morning, Pastor Bess. Good morning, viewers and listeners. Um, delighted, always delighted to be with you and Pastor's Corner to share, um, to interact. Um, and this morning, I look forward for the discussion, Pastor. Amen, amen. And just let me share a quick, you know, sense of humor that I told him this morning. You know, I always know when he has to go on Pastor's Corner because his haircut is always sharp and on point. <laughs> you know, uh, he's always prepared. Um, to my far left, you know, to my far left, is a gentleman, I, 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 I think a lot of you are f well aware um, of him and who he is. Since I became an employee of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, many persons have came to me and they told me, you know, you look like this gentleman. You look like this gentleman. He's the pastor of the Southeastern District of Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, his name is Pastor Marlon Peters. Good day to you, Pastor Peters. How are you doing? Good morning, Pastor Bess, and I'm doing fine by God's grace. And tomorrow, good morning to all of my viewers. May God bless us today indeed. A amen, amen. You know, gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to our next episode of Pastor's Corner. And of course, we are delighted that you took the time from your busy schedule to be here today to help educate us, to help, um, you know, in facilitating the discussion today. But just before we begin, I would ask Pastor Enoch Isaac, can you just open with a word of prayer? us, please ask in God's spirit to be with us as we discuss uh, the Christian and finance. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity again to share. We ask your blessing upon this program. Be with the host, Pastor Best, and be to our listeners and viewers, and be with us here as a guest, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Before I go into the discussion, let me just take the time again to just um, say welcome to our online viewers. I encourage you at this time to call someone, you know, tell a friend, WhatsApp a friend, pick up your phone and call someone. And also, you know, let them know Pastor's Corner is on today and um, we are discussing the Christian and finance already. I see online, yes, Sister Stedlin Isaac is there. Uh, but, uh, Rolf Ferguson is there as well. He says, good, pleasant morning to you, Pastors. Greetings, all right, and greetings to you as well. Um, today, as we look at uh, the topic, the Christian and finance, Pastor Peters, I would begin uh, with you. Um, uh, do you think it is important to teach finance among the Christian community? Um, certainly so, Pastor, Pastor Bess. And um, my rationale for such is that everything we do today involves finance. Mm -hmm. um, on our work, in our churches, in our community, it involves finance. Finance plays a very integral role in our day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. And as Christian man or woman, it is imperative that we understand the mechanics, the, the earning it and the, the managing of it, or else if this is not effectively done, we can find ourselves into some serious loopholes as, as individuals who are looking forward to the second coming of Christ. So yes, it is imperative. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I would, I would add to that, I think, of course, it is very important mm -hmm. that we teach and we learn about finance. Finance is about everything. You rise or fall would de depend upon your understanding and um, your play and interplay with finance. Um, if we follow the life and teaching of Jesus, Jesus spoke on numerous occasions about finance. And sometimes you wonder, what was in Jesus' head? Because he's always talking about finance. Okay. 
Okay. Um, Jesus told a parable of a woman who lost a coin and swept the entire house. Now, why would Jesus take the time to, to, to speak about this parable? The implication is that it's important. A coin is important. Um, it's like having, losing your wallet. You don't want to leave the house because um, if you're traveling with a bus, you need to pay the bus. If you're traveling with your vehicle, you may need to put gas and you don't have your, your wallet, you don't have your card. You, I mean, you know, finance is important. Jesus told a parable of, um, um, well, not a parable. He commanded, well, he told many parables. He told the parable of the talents of that gentleman who buried it and, you know, yes. and, and um, didn't invest it. Jesus commanded on one occasion disciples to go and fish, to get a fish. Mm -hmm. The intention was not for eating because he gave instruction. When you get that, the first fish, you will find a coin in his mouth, mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. finance. You should take that to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So here was Jesus, um, wasn't a renegade. He was concerned about paying taxes. And he knew that money that is needed, money that is needed to pay taxes. So Jesus, um, Jesus instructed. And then um, in Matthew 6, 21, Jesus said, we have, to be, we have to be very careful because um, he says, where your treasure is. Treasure is your heart will be there. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say where your heart is, your treasure will be. You know? mm -hmm. He said where your treasure is, your heart, that's finance. So it means that each one of us has to be so mindful of, of this because, because it means our heart will follow our treasure. Mm -hmm. So it's important to talk about finance, discuss finance, understand finance because where our treasure is, our heart will follow. So I think it's important. It's imperative. Amen, amen. And just before we continue, viewers online, I also want to encourage you uh, to make your comments as it pertains to today's topic in the comment section. And as we have the time, um, if time permits, um, I would highlight a few of them. You can also ask questions. And as time permits, I would also highlight um, a few of those questions if we are able to in studio. But we, we do welcome your comments. As a matter of fact, um, these programs will not be the way they are if you had not been present and given your feedback. So Amen. we do appreciate you and we want your comments as well. All right. So Pastor Enoch, you, I, I am sticking with you, right? I'm staying with you in, in for this second follow-up. Um, would you would you suggest, right? Or would you suggest it is the most in um what is the most important element rather of the Christian? Is it earning money? A saving Money, giving money, or spending money, which would you suggest is the most important element of the Christian? Is it earning, giving, saving, or spending money? Which one do you suggest is the most important one? Um, Pastor, that's a very tricky question because um, <laughs> naturally someone might think, well, the Christian needs to give. Okay. You know, so that might be the most important thing. Um, but if you don't have, you can't give. All right. You know, so. Um, I, I, I would say that they, they, they carry importance, maybe equal importance, but you have, to, you have to earn. You have to be able to get, mm -hmm. to be able to save, to be able to spend, mm -hmm. and to be able to give. Yes, you must have it, first of all. Um, but, but they are all equally important um, because a Christian, after earning, a Christian has to be mindful of, He's spending. He's a whole spending. Yeah. You see? Um, he's not just buying stuff. He says, my money and I are just buying stuff. Um, the Christian has to be mindful of how it's giving. We, we should be, you know, the Bible, in fact, the Bible says, God loveth a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and that's giving to um, um, persons who are in need. But not only that, we need to be, uh, the Christian has to be concerned about giving to God. And there is, there is a little... Um, I have it says don't rob God if you don't pray you you are robbing him of relationship mm -hmm. if you don't worship you are robbing him of praise mm -hmm. if you don't tight you are robbing God of your finances okay. so so I'm, I'm saying for the Christian I think they they're all important um, because the Christian the important thing for a Christian is for a Christian to be a good steward yes so when you earn because if you don't earn you can't you can't spend you can't save so you, you, you have to be prudent in earning, prudent in saving, 
prudent in spending mm -hmm. and prudent in giving. Amen. Yeah, I think that's my comment <laughs> on, on this question. Um, Prisha, if I'm, if I'm going to comment on the very sad question, I, I take a slightly different approach to Pastor Isaac. And um, I believe that all of them weigh the same level of importance. Okay. Even, um, and I'm looking at it from the, from the operating world within the, the question for the Christian. For the, yeah. um, I believe that there is an overarching principle that a Christian man should maintain at all times in his earning, in his giving, in his managing, whichever. Because you cannot go and sell cocaine to earn money as a Christian. Mm -hmm. God, is, God would not be pleased with that. Mm -hmm. You can earn money through um, a fair job, a good job. Mm -hmm. And after receiving such money, maybe you can go and buy costume with it for job job. Mm. So God will be displeased the right. very same, in this very same vein. Yes. And, and hence the reason why I say that there are uh, overarching principles that governs the Christians day to day activities and inactivities. It must be guided by the principle, first of all, of the Holy Spirit. So, yes, and Pastor Isaac mentioned that we can earn, and yet for all, we can, we can make um, a tantrum mm -hmm. with, with, with what we would have earned. And therefore, I believe that all of them weigh that significant level of importance, not just the earning. Well, maybe to some person, they believe I must have the money now, but maybe. In earning that money, you might go and do something that is wrong to get the money. Okay. You know, some young ladies might go and get themselves involved in prostitution to get that money. I must earn the money. And when I get it, I will start planning. But I know. I think that the Christian must understand, even before I receive the money, I must have some level of understanding as to how I should manage it, where I should allocate it, what I should do with it, even before I earn it. All right. Even before I earn it. Very good. Very good response. Very good response. <laughs> Pastor Isaac, you know, there is this Bible text. Um, that speaks to um, being, I would read it for you, right? But it speaks to not being a lover of money, you know? The love of money is the root of, let me read the text. But it comes from the book of First Timothy uh, chapter 6 and verse 10. It says, for the love of money, I want you to listen, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Um, is it possible, Pastor, to be a user of money and not a lover of it then? If, you know, can there be... Uh, is it possible? Yes, Pastor, I believe. Um, <laughs> if, if, the, if it's not possible, we are all in trouble <laughs> <laughs> because we all use money. Um, yes, I believe we, it is possible to use money because we have to use money. Money is what we consider as a legal tender. Um, to do almost anything that we, we, we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, to buy ma the mics that we have, we have to have money. To get our foods, we have to have money. Mm -hmm. So um, using money is different from loving money. Okay. The Bible denounces um, one as being a lover of money. You see, a lover of money is one who is captivated by money. Mm -hmm. a love money lovers don't have any boundaries. Uh, what do I mean by that? The... They, they will do anything for anything. Mm -hmm. uh, money lovers will lie mm -hmm. to gain money. Money lovers will cheat to gain money. Money lovers will slander others to get money. They will even kill to get money mm. because you are captivated by it. They have no boundaries as to what they will do or not do for money. They will oppress persons to get money. You know, um, rob, fraud They're in business and it's all kind of um, fraudulent um, you know, mm -hmm. business practice they're engaging just to get money. You see? But a person who has to use money and knows we have to use it, you, you just have it and you use it wisely with God's help. That is different from money lovers. Money lovers, I repeat myself, they are consumed by money. Mm. Yes? Mm. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a strong word. To be consumed. They are captivated by it. And, and they would allow themselves the character and, and every other thing goes out the door because they have to get it. They will do anything for it. All right. Yes, and this is what the, the Apostle Paul um, is speaking to in, in, in um, Timothy. Pastor yeah? Peter's along this. Thank you, Pastor Isaac. Uh, Pastor Peter's along the same vein. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 10 says, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied. He that loveth silver, Pastor, shall not be satisfied with silver. Nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also 
vanity. What, what is happening here? What is the wise man Solomon uh, saying to us here as it pertains to the whole concept of user of money and not be a lover of it? And I want to start off by answering this question in this very vein. God would have created us as human beings. And he understands the, the mechanics within us. Mm -hmm. There are a few things that God asks us to love. He asks us to love our Lord, thy God, and he asks us to love our brothers and our sisters. Okay. There are certain things that he asks us not to love. Love mm -hmm. not the world. Yes. And then we should not love money mm -hmm. in the negative. Mm -hmm. um, God knows very well why he asks us not to love these things. Mm -hmm. Not in itself, as Pastor Isaac could have just mentioned, that money has hands and feet that he can knock us down or bring us in party or, or, or do anything. Mm -hmm. But God knows the, the social side of us, how we get wild at times. <laughs> That's the reason why he allows some of us to remain a little poor, like myself. Okay. You know, <laughs> so that we will not get out of hand yeah. if we are getting things so easy because mm -hmm. I might go and buy a Ferrari or I might buy private jets. And what causes is that probably I will li live life lavishly mm -hmm. and forget God. So when the, when the wise man here is making reference to him not being in a position that will cause him to forget God. Mm -hmm. Love not silver, but he's asking God to help him to be satisfied or contented with whatever God sees fit mm -hmm. to bless him with. And I do not want our viewers to go with the idea that if you, you have and you're rich, that you are condemned by God. No. Mm -hmm. And we okay. can draw allusion to Abraham himself. That's a very good point, Pastor. Guy. Yeah. That's a very good point, you know. Um, work it. Continue working yeah, yeah. the point. As I was making, <laughs> making the point. Abraham himself was a wealthy guy. Mm -hmm. um, and I... I Honestly, believe when you do the mathematical calculation, they would have, um, Abraham probably would have been richer than anyone in Grenada. Mm -hmm. Anyone in Grenada, a wealthy guy. But Abraham, his focus was upon God. Do not allow these external stuff to deter you as to the principle that God would have embedded within us. Okay. Sometimes that's where the problem lies. We get wild, as I mentioned before, in our local parlance. We lose sight as to who God is. But so the wise man is saying here, he that loveth silver, shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. Because the more we have, it is the more we want to accumulate. And it robs us, robs our communion and communication with God. Mm -hmm. So here he's asking us, please, don't try to gather silver for your, own, for your own pleasure. Rather, be contented with what God would have entrusted you with. You know, I have a follow-up question, right? But yes. before I take the follow-up, I just want to read a comment I, I saw um, on the chat, it says, yes, pastor, some people will do anything for money. That's why there is a saying that goes, money talks. Money, talk. money <laughs> talks, pastor. You know, have you ever heard that statement? <laughs> <laughs> of, of course. Uh, and what, 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 what is meant by that is that um, you, principles are all the do mm -hmm. if you have money. So there are some standards and some regulations one has to follow to get a job or get some something approved mm -hmm. um you know and they come and they don't have it but and that's why in government people have been very not only in government but all over yeah people are very careful because certain regulations have been made and what have you but then someone comes with money and they pass something under the table mm -hmm. yeah. so they are not abiding with the principles that are set up but because of money that's why you have the term corruption is always used because because they now give you money or things you ignore the principles. Okay. Yes. So that's why it's a money talk. So you don't have the prerequisite that is needed, but you pass some money. You know, um, according yeah, to where you're working in government. <laughs> I, I keep saying government because um, you know, you have to have very, <laughs> you have to have very decent moral people on the put. Yeah. Yes. You see, yeah. because people come in with staff and they have regulations there, but when you pass some money, when you pass some money, like everybody close their eyes. It's drop. Yes. All regulations gone. Yes. I've been to a place in the world and. Um, when we were passing, you know, um, driving after landing, someone, we saw some police officers, oh. and the person said, Pastor, these are the most corrupt police officers in the world. I said, why? Because, I mean, I, I, you hear about corruption all over. Man of money. They said, no, anything, any traffic offense that have anything you do here, just give them money, and that's it. Mm. You know, uh, in that part of the world. So that's why they say money talks. So, but it should not be Pastor Beth. Principle should be principle. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said earlier on, there are some people who do anything for money. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are no boundaries. Mm -hmm. Because once they will get money or get, well, equivalent, you know, they, they just ignore everything. And, um, and the apostle, not, sorry, not the apostle, the wise man is saying, do not allow silver to cloud our vision of what is right or wrong. Okay. Yes, don't, don't allow it. Don't, some people, as like I said, break relationship. You know, they break up their own relationship with, with spouse, with mm -hmm. friends because of money. Yeah, because they, they, they allow nothing. I mean, they just can't see anything 
good except money. And that's when you love it. Yes, it consumes you. You are, you, are, you are overwhelmed by it. And it should not be that way. We have to use it. We have to get things because we should, God doesn't want these people to, to, be, um, to steal. So we have to have money, to use money. But money should not consume us and control us. All right. Pastor Peter, you wanted yeah, to follow up? As you on this point, you know, I, I, a trend of thought came across my mind as that person would have mentioned um, money talks. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we operate as though that this is foreign amongst us. Mm -hmm. um, but within our context as Christians, voluntary service and involuntary service seems to be approached differently. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I call some persons and I'm paying, you will see more response mm -hmm. than those who are volunteering. Ah. So it seems as though money talks is not something foreign amongst us anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe as pastors, if we want members to serve in our departments in our church, we need to put some, some funds into it. Me, I'm just, I'm just suggesting. <laughs> oh but, but that is where, mm -hmm. Ella, I get you. we place the dichotomy of loving money. Mm -hmm. You see, and, and that's where it's, it's leading. It seems to suggest that voluntary service to God, money is also, we can view it from the perspective of persons' love for money. Um, because if we, anything that we put above the principles of God can be considered love for money. Yep. So I think this is something for us to, to think about. But I like the, the idea that money talks in society. It ev evades morality. Problem in our society. We can buy almost anything. Mm. Quote cases on, you're wrong, video pick you up. But once you have money, you sweep it. That, that quote, you're not hearing about it again. But should it happen amongst us as Seventh-day Adventist Christian? Um, a question for all of us to, to ponder. Upon. That's a good question to ponder. But I have a question, a follow-up response that <laughs> I want. I want both of you all to give some discussion to. We're still on the idea of the love of money. <laughs> Now, you know, sometimes, <clears throat> let's say, for example, I allow pastor, I give, I'm just using you, Pastor Peters, right? Yes. I give Pastor Peters, let's say, a, a $50. You know, I had that, you know, and I, he, he came, he found me where I am, Pastor Isaac, and I gave him 50 and I said, he said, you'll give me back that money. Time comes no, and... No, hold on. Now, <laughs> just for clarity, mm. you said you gave him the money well, or you loaned him? him? I loaned him. I loaned oh, okay, him. Yeah, okay, thank okay. you. I, okay. I loaned him that, that $50 with the intention that he would, you know, return it. And um, when the time reached, Pastor Peters, I, I approach him for my money, and he starts, man, you're greedy for money, so you love money, you know. Um, can you give some feedback on that as it pertains to, am I a lover of money because I, I asked Pastor Peters for, for, for what I loaned him? Well, <laughs> um, well, just asking for what belongs to you doesn't make you a lover of money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the... There's a principle here we have to um, be very mindful of. The Apostle Paul in Romans, I think it's 13, 8, he says, Oh, no man anything mm -hmm. except love. Okay. And I think as Christians, we need to read this text and understand it because there are many of us Christians. I mean, I don't, I don't know what is the term. If it's bad pay or just bad mind, mm. you know, mm. we're coming to persons <laughs> with the intention of not. You know, not returning. We have the intention. We wouldn't do it. The mm. person we figure the person have money. People's money is not our money. That's so true. your fifty dollars is not my fifty dollars. Okay. So if I would like to have your fifty dollars, I can ask you for it. Mm -hmm. Pastor Best, can you give me fifty dollars? Yeah. I should not come to you and say, Pastor, could you? Could I borrow fifty dollars from you? Mm -hmm. No. That means I have to pay. Yes. If I don't have money to pay, I must ask you. And if you so desire to give it to me, you give it. But if you give it to me, as, a, as a lo you loan me, then I have to pay and I, and I agree at a certain time. So you ask me, um, I agree, yeah, month in. Mm -hmm. Month in pass. And I'm not returning your money. Mm -hmm. I'm acting as though I don't owe you. But I'm a Christian. I'm not a Christian. I'm a fake Christian. Mm -hmm. Christian must pay up. But pastor, you get vexed when I start asking now because no, in a sense, I ask and the moment I ask, you, you get vexed, and then it's like, oh, that man only running me down for money, so he greedy, you know? You know? Well, you see, the sinner <laughs> is the one sometimes <laughs> attributing the sin. Okay. You see? So the person who is guilty mm -hmm. is now making the, the, the lender as though the lender is guilty. The lender is not the guilty one. The lender is the one who gave you mm -hmm. the money. It was by choice. They didn't have to do that. And, 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 and as Christians, they're, they're, that's where our Christian principles come into play. Now, if I pass the best, there could be good reasons. Mm -hmm. I said I was going to give you the money end of July. But things happen. You know, I, I, I got paid, yes, but, you know, tragedy strike, my vehicle. 
got smashed up or, or something, my child got sick. Mm -hmm. I must, it's my responsibility to come to you or to message you, call you, not even message, because, mm -hmm. you know, call you and say, Pastor Best, I, I, I had intention to pay. This is what happened. So I, I'm asking you to give me two more weeks or um, preferably the next month end. You know, um, that you have been expecting your money, but at least that's courtesy. Yes. You yes, see? That's right. And when the time is coming up, I have to ensure, even if I have to suck salt now, to ensure that you get your $50. Because if for the second time I can't give you, it's like a run around. So I have to now deny myself of some things to ensure that you get your money. Mm -hmm. and I think that's a principle that we have to, uh, um, as, as Christians, you know, as human beings, and as Christians in particular, because we represent Christ. You know, when it was time for paying tax, God, Jesus didn't tell Peter and the disciples, don't bother with them. No, Jesus said, go and catch a fish, Pastor Peter's. That's right. You know? <laughs> Peter who Peter had. <laughs> he said, look in the mouth of that fish, <laughs> and there is coin. money yeah. there. And go and pay taxes. Yes, so yes. Jesus didn't want to have people running around um, saying Jesus and his help is not paying tax. So uh, as Christians, we have to pay our taxes. Okay. Yes. You know, so it's important. It's important. You know, Elan, um, Pastor, at Elan, Ralph Ferguson used a text, mm -hmm. which is very, very important. The Bible calls them wicked. He said the wicked in Psalms. Psalms, Psalms 37, right. Psalms 21. 21. Mm. The wicked, <laughs> 21. The wicked borrow it and pray it not again. Mm. But a righteous should mercy and give it. Mm. Um, we don't do too well with money. Seventh-day Adventists borrow okay. We don't do too well borrowing and repaying. And, and Pastor Isaac outlaid the principle that is involved in borrowing. The Bible calls them wicked. You mm. are wicked if you borrow the people's money and don't return it. Mm -hmm. And as Pastor Isaac, there are circumstances where on a circumstance where mm -hmm. you just can't meet it at that date, you must contact the individual. You must let them know. But you cannot borrow the people's money. Come to church this Sabbath. Don't tell them anything. From since you borrowed and you know the dates passed, you ain't calling them, you ain't telling them a word again. And you have to have some of those members come in and say, Pastor, please tell that member, give me my money. Better ignore. I think God is displeased with, with such behavior and attitude. And whenever we borrow, we must learn the Christian love and principle to repay. Right. Once we don't repay that, Ella, God will hold us guilty. All right. <laughs> okay, good. You know, on the same, um, as we continue along the, the, the topic, Christian and the Christian and finance, um, it is said, it is known, some persons um, um, go about with the notion of money, you know, and is money an idol, you know, money being an idol. There is a text I want to quote, or I want to read rather for you, which comes from the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. It says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one, Pastor Peters, and despise the others. Can you, you cannot rather serve God and mammon, Pastor Peters? Uh, looking at the question, Pastor Bess, um, mm. money is an idol. Money is an idol for some people. Mm. Who allows money to be an idol for them? Mm -hmm. Money in itself is not an idol. We make things an idol. For some persons, it is their cell phone. For some, it is um, the clothes. Mm -hmm. For some, it's a vehicle. Mm -hmm. There are many things that we make our own idol. But we need to understand the, from the biblical context in Matthew chapter 20, 24, 6 and verse 24, um, we can't make money an idol and expect to serve God in the same vein. Mm -hmm. It ought not to be. God must be supreme. So no man can serve two masters. If money is your master, then definitely God cannot be your master. So it's, it is either we manage the situation with money in a Christian perspective manner, whereas we understand that God is supreme and everything else follows the order, or we allow money to take charge of our lives and, and, and leave God alone. But we cannot serve money and, the same, and at the same time saying, God, you are so holy and so loving and so true, and you know you're doing all sorts of wrong things for money. And that's where we start loving money. You're thiefing. You know, Pastor Isaac mentioned it before. You're, you're selling weed. Mm -hmm. You're a user member, but you're selling weed for, for persons on the block. You're involving scheme and lies and, and, mm -hmm. and all sorts of nonsense. That's where we place money on a pedestal above God. And we ought to be careful. That's where money becomes our master. Okay. Of course, yes, I agree with Pastor <laughs> Peters. Money by itself is not an idol. <laughs> As I said, money is a legal tender. You have a $100 bill here, and that's not an idol. What we make, motive, is determined, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, yes, there are persons who make money an idol, you know, like anything else, you know? Anything that is placed before God is an idol. That's right. Yes? An idol, you see, we have this idea that an idol is something, um, you know, 
that you you see you bow down yeah. you go to a certain church and I you know, a crave, a crave like, something yeah, a crave. no no <laughs> anything is an idol pastor peter <laughs> mentioned some people's phone is an idol mm -hmm. because that is more important to them than anything else in the world mm -hmm. so yes for some person money is an idol um and and and, and so yes once you put it and that's what jesus said in matthew 6 24 anything is god and the devil but for some persons the devil is really the money mm -hmm. if you understand what i'm saying Anything that is contrary to God is the devil, you know. And for some persons, that is money. You see? I because see. what they do to get promotion and the job, what they is, uh, is, they don't, listen to me. If there are some persons, if they give them promotion and they don't have money, they don't want it, you know. Yeah. If you understand. So promotion is, yes, power and money. But it's behind of that, it's the, behind the promotion is really the, the money. Mm -hmm. So it's what persons do and what they cause um, others to say. So it comes in different facets. So they may not be selling weed or what have you, That's but right. it's the scheme, they may be in business practice, the scheme past the best. That's right. Yes? That they engage in to get money. Mm. Always trying to trick somebody. You know? Yeah. Um, and and, and, and the, there's a term that we use today. People say, they get, I get you. Yeah. yeah. So, so they, yeah, you know, um, you know, they're selling vehicle, whatever it is. I'm not picking on anybody, but yeah. there are some persons... They always scheme in to get ahead. Yeah. 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 And and yeah. that and what is behind it? Yeah. The drive for money. Mm -hmm. right. So so and it's not that if you run a a, a, um, a legal business with good principles, obviously you want you have to leave. So you 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 sell something, you get money. But the schemes behind it. That's that's what that's that's what drives many that's persons, that's and that's what makes the idol. You yeah. Know, talking about schemes, right? Um. In these last days, or you know, we, we often say we are living in the last days, right? Um, and talking about schemes, Pastor Peters, is it prudent for the Christian to invest their money in financial institutions or other profit-making schemes? <coughs> is it prudent for us to do that? There is nothing that is un like unchristian about investment. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I believe that as wise Christians, we must invest. Mm -hmm. But there are some things that we must ensure when we're investing and we must seek information. Um, because we know persons would have lost a lot of money through those same schemes that mm -hmm. you're making reference today mm -hmm. over the years. But sh should that cause us not to invest? Mm -hmm. The Bible speaks in relation to the talents. And, mm -hmm. and who was condemned at the end of the talent was the person that didn't invest. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it is, it is prudent to invest. But we must be very meticulous in our investment. Where, um, how why all these questions, we must ask it. We must do an historical background check as to where we are investing. Because persons just hear um, big interest. And because the interest catch us, we, run, we, we just run for it. Um, there is this entity that we have, they borrow $10,000, but the interest is high as kite in Grenada here now. We call them fast cash and all those, all those kind of um, stuff. So we have to be careful where. But I think it is wise that we invest. Together with that, Ella, there are some persons with the notion that um, they are not putting any money in any bank. Mm. They are holding their money's home. That yes. in itself can become illegal. Mm -hmm. Because as we know, if the law enforcement come and they search your place and there is $10,000 or more, um, you can be charged. Mm -hmm. You can be charged. Mm -hmm. That is illegal. Mm -hmm. So um, getting, invest, getting an investment, Ella, it is prudent. But where? How? Why? These are some questions we must ask. And we must be meticulous in how we are doing it. So God, I, I believe that, that it's okay for Christians to invest. I think it's a wise thing. For Christians to invest, but how we should be careful, Pastor. If your your thoughts. Are yes, of course. Um, <laughs> as Pastor Peter said, and again, when you, our, you know, I, I always like to look at Jesus, mm -hmm. the life and teachings of Jesus. Jesus talked all about investing, you know, and, and in his parables, you, and, and that tells you that, you know, Jesus thought it was just new and thought believe it, it was quite something that is prudent. But as Pastor Peter says, no, we have to be wise. You see. We had collapse here. We had, we, I mean, I mean, no fault of persons. We, right here in Grenada, we had, we, we had, um, you invest in a certain company, you get in some twenty something percent, and that was too good to be true. Anything that is yes. too good to be true, we have to be careful. Be very careful. You know, and and then it, it collapsed, mm -hmm. and and Grenadians, Grenadians lost millions of dollars, more than one entity, uh, without calling names. And then on the international um, arena, now we have, I mean, two thousand eight was the collapse of the financial meltdown of the world. Yes. And lots of persons lost their saving. People, some people committed suicide, which was very sad. Mm -hmm. But they placed all the monies and they, 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 they knew the investments there, the life savings there. And then it just, it just, I mean, just blew up. 
So um, we have to be wise. For example, I would say, Pastor Best, that you know you, you have you have a hundred thousand dollars, seventy five thousand dollars. You may want to look for three different entities mm -hmm. or three different things. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you may say, okay, I'll try Grand Lake with that seventy with twenty five thousand. You might you might say, I'll, I'll try a little small business with twenty five. Maybe I'm just using an example. Yeah. Yeah. So in case Grand Lake, you know, close down and or what have you, or, or in case the small business flop you can still get something from something else. So I think it's prudent to invest. You can't say it, it is foolish to, to say I'm a Christian and Christian not, should not be invested. No, in fact, the Bible doesn't support you. When you're not investing, I think that's where you're condemned. But I think now we have to be wise than ever. That's How right. you do, as Pastor Peter said, what you do, where, you know, I think is more important than anything else. All right, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, we have been having wonderful discussions thus far. You know, just for the information that was shared thus far um, to settle in your mind. At this moment, we would have a, a short break as we have a promotional video, and then we would continue with our discussions immediately after that video. Hello, my name is Samora Bess. The Men's Ministry Department of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists has planned for each and every one of us as men August the 21st at the campsite, beginning 10 a.m. You may ask what? It's a day of fun and fellowship. Come enjoy cricket, football, board games, food and fun. Come and enjoy the fellowship. Come, come and have fun as we celebrate our manhood. Looking forward to seeing you there. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Yes, um, if I should just say, you know, you just saw that promotional video there uh, promoting uh, the Men's Fellowship Day. You know, it's a time where as men throughout the length and breadth of Grenada, Caricou and Petit Martinique, you know, if you can make it, you come. And we, we just want to kick back a little bit, Pastor Peters, you know. Um, I think the pastors could put on a little short three-quarter pants that time. And, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, but the, the whole idea behind it is um, where, as men, you know, we gather at the campsite. Um, we have food, fun, and fellowship, board games, you know, cricket, football. You know, just have a good time as men. And, and, and in that way, we are able to um, meet and greet um, all the other men through the length and breadth of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists on that day, um... August the 21st. So um, speak to your district pastor or the men's ministries leader in your church and sign up to be a part of that all-important um, day. You know, it will be fun, and I can tell you, you do not want to miss it. If you miss it, blame yourself, because I know the men will be coming back saying they had a wonderful time. And so I encourage all our men to be a part of this. Pastor Isaac, I have a very interesting question here. Which do you think is better? Which do you think is better? <laughs> right? Or which do you think better represents the Christian in this, in this time? Poverty or riches? Have mercy. Right? Poverty or riches. But before you attempt to um, give your answer, I want to read a, a, a scripture, a text. And then I want you to give your answer after. It comes from the book of Proverbs chapter 30. Right, verses 7 to 9. All right, and it says, Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Verse 9 says, Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Pastor Isaac. Yeah, uh, well. <laughs> Which do you think better represents Christianity, poverty or riches? Well, I'm not sure any of them represent Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you know, a Christian is a follower of Jesus. Let's say that the poor. <laughs> yeah, yeah a, Christian, a Christian is a follower of Jesus. Okay. Um, the, the, the psalmist David mm -hmm. said about Jesus, mm -hmm. the Lord, that the cattle and a thousand hills belong to him. He rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Christian is a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the prophet Haggai um, said about God, he said, 
God is saying to the prophet that, behold, the silver is mine and mm -hmm. the gold is mine. Today, you will say the dollars belong to me mm -hmm. and the Christian. So that, that means the Lord we serve is a loaded God. I mean, Jesus is loaded. I like that term. Yeah. I, I like that term. <laughs> he loaded it. Yeah, Jesus loaded. Yeah. And the Christian is a follower of Jesus. So, um, you know, we can say that the Christian, by virtue of being a follower of Jesus, he's also loaded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I think I think it's important to for for the Christian to remain humble. Yeah, you see, um, um, Pastor Peter has mentioned earlier on that um, the Bible talks about rich people. Abraham was a rich man. Yes. The Lot Lot was rich. Um, Job was the richest of his in, in his time, mm -hmm. and they were serving God. Um, so, I think the important thing is 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 not to Christianity mm -hmm. is not determined by stuff. Yeah, once Christianity, genuineness in Christianity is not determined by the stuff you have or the wealth you have. Um, so you can be a wealthy person. God has blessed some persons, millionaires, um, and you know, and and some persons have thousands of dollars, and they're very diligent, genuine Christians. Um, you know, and and God has blessed God has blessed others with very little, and God knew why because there are some persons. Um, if you give them a little. Too much, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, not much, you know, just a little too much is a problem. So, so, so we have to be careful because sometimes we equate, we, sorry, equate Christianity with poverty. Mm -hmm. That's a wrong concept. Jesus did say, in making comment one time, Jesus said, the poor you'll always have with you. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I, 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 I interpret that to mean that, what well, that means really, that it's not that Christians have to be poor. What is Jesus was saying that whatever the circumstance, what you can be the best economist, you'll have poor people until Jesus comes because that's just the system. You'll always have poor persons, not necessarily by, by their own design, but by design of the system, mm -hmm. right? So I am, I'm, I'm making the point that um, in relation to the question that um, is neither poverty or riches. I think it's based on what God has given you. You've been a good Christian to... to a good person, a good manager, a good steward to manage. And, 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 and so if you are, you can be a poor person and you could be going to hell. Mm. Yes, you know, That's you right. could be poor and going to hell. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so you don't say because I'm poor, I'm not I'm going to heaven. No, no, no. You, one has to accept Christ and live for Christ. So um, I, I'm saying it's neither poverty or riches, but to be a Christian, a follower of Christ, a humble person, be led by God. Pastor Peters, you want to give you two you know, pens yeah, on that? Two pens on that. Yeah. That, that is a very um, ticklish one. All right. Um, poverty is a hell of a thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. po no, poverty is a hell of a thing. And sometimes we equate poverty with poor, but poverty is different from poor. Yeah. Um, yeah. We reach to a state of poverty when we just don't have anything to go by. Mm -hmm. And that in itself, I don't think that is God's desire for us. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to be in poverty. I don't want to be rich either. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me to choose one, I will tell you I want to re be rich than to be in poverty. Have I want mercy. to have something than to, be, than to don't have anything. But I like how Pastor Enoch would have um, brought it forward. Mm -hmm. And um, what text runs to mind, John speaking to Gaius, beloved, I wish above all things that thou prosper and be in good health, even mm -hmm. as thy soul prosper. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you must have a bounty full of material blessing, but you must be filled and rich with the Spirit of God. And that should be our, our clue for richness, the Spirit of God. Yeah, and just to make um, in the text, King Agar, um, clearly, he was a king, and he clearly asked the Lord, well, for a couple of things. One, he said he doesn't want to be remove lies from him. But then sticking to the context today, he said he doesn't want to be rich. That's a king. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, a, a special um, wish or, you know, that he had, a concern. He doesn't want to be rich because he felt maybe in his riches he will ignore God. And there are some people that once you give them a little blessing, that's it. it's not much. Once God gives them a little blessing, forget that. Mm -hmm. Yeah? The commitment gone. You know? And the king didn't want to be in that situation. Neither did he want to be in poverty, not having, because he felt that that would be a blasphemous thing to not to, to be serving a powerful God mm -hmm. and not have anything to go by. So he asked God to just keep him in the middle. Yeah. I think that's a good place to be. Keep him in the middle. And I think um, that's a good place, Pastor Peters, to be I in the middle. Mean, you know? I just want to <laughs> say it's a good place when it comes to that finance and what we're dealing with there, but when it comes to giving your heart to Jesus, of course. sign up for Jesus. Of course, of yes, course. Sign up for Jesus. You know, um, Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12 says, not that I speak in, re in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. 
I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer. All right, I'm should, shouldn't the Christians, uh, with that text being read, Pastor Enoch, shouldn't the Christians be content with whatever state he finds himself or herself? Well, um, context determined meaning, Pastor. If you're in a state of, uh, a state of sinfulness, down in the gutter, you can't be content with that. Mm -hmm. That's not God's desire for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, so in relation to in whatever state mm -hmm. you are, no, we are context determined meaning. There, um, in relation to our topic today, mm -hmm. yes, we should be contented, and 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 then that even that has to be understood. The apostle Paul was saying, <coughs> "Hey, listen to me." He was praising the, the, the believers relative to the text that um, the you know the the measures you 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 the the things that you gave to me and, mm -hmm. and the blessings you, you, um, you gave. I really appreciated that. And, but he said, not, not that I'm putting any pressure on you, not that I was in, in dire need because you know me, the Apostle yeah. Paul. Yeah. I'm the guy who just very contented with whatever state I am. So if I have little, it's like, you know, the folks, I don't know if you, you're probably too young to know that statement, <laughs> Pastor. The old folks used to say, um, you know, if you have to suck salt. Yeah, man. You know yeah, that? Okay, okay. Salt. Yeah, <laughs> but the Apostle Paul would drink, would, would suck salt. Yeah. And, and act as though he's, he, was, right. he was, you know, sucking uh, a julie mango. Okay. And really he was salt sucking. Because yeah. he had this, this, this contented attitude that he, he didn't make noise for anything. Mm -hmm. So that is the context in which he's saying. He's saying that we must learn to be that way. Christians should learn to be that way. Because, you see, Pastor Bess, um, complaining is demonic. I repeat, to complain. A lot of us Christians, we, we like to complain. That is true. And mm -hmm. that is demonic. Mm -hmm. The way we read the Old Testament, we yeah. saw God destroy the children of Israel because yeah. they were complaining. Complaining, complaining. And sometimes, we, as Christians, we just find ourselves complaining. Mm -hmm. You know, we complain about everything. Mm -hmm. You know, um, relative to finance and um, what God is doing. And we, we, we even want to rob God because right. we figure we don't, you know, we complain. And, and, and then some of us are too lazy. Mm. You know, the, the Lord must come and drop things on us. Mm -hmm. You know, right. yeah, rain so, yes, yeah, just, just rain manner. <laughs> we don't, you know, we don't, working hard and, and applying ourselves in situation mm -hmm. is a problem for some of us. So, um, we have to be, we have to understand the Apostle Paul text and, and don't take it out of context. Okay. The Apostle Paul okay. was saying, I'm the guy, if I have much, that's fine. If I have little, I'm still fine. But um, some of us, if we don't have, the world has to know because we complain. We go, we go on Facebook and we, come, we, we, we you know, we, we say all kinds of stuff. Because people know our business just because, you know, yeah, we have to be careful with that. Yeah, Ella, we, we, we take this text out of context. Yeah. Oftentimes, as Pastor Isaac could have hinted too. Um, in some cases, some persons do not have anything, and yet for all saying, I'm contented with that. Does mm -hmm. it mean that you do not have to work and try to better yourself? And sometimes that's where we, we blow it out of proportion. And the Apostle Paul here is speaking, first of all, in relation to spiritual maturity. I have Christ, mm -hmm. he's saying here. So when you have Christ, Christ is able mm -hmm. to guide you and to help you through life circumstances. So he's helping the believer understand here to have Christ is, is of supreme mm -hmm. interest. When we have him, we are able to manage all other aspects of our life. But yet for all, he's saying we must very much be careful of running after the things that are less important because he's speaking, he's speaking to the church in Philippi. And he's saying, look, I, I not, I'm not pressuring you for anything. Mm -hmm. I understand how to live without and live with because of my past experiences. Mm -hmm. So he's giving them some practical idea as to how they should Grow as Christian in the faith, not negating the fact that there are times that hardship will come. And at the same time, there are times that you will have. But you must learn to live in, well, in accordance Pastor with Pastor Peters, I, I would ask you this, right? Yeah. Pastor Enoch, let's, let's say the experience of Pastor <laughs> Peters coming in there, right? Matthew, listen to me now. Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34 says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow. That's following up on what you would have just right. Been, right? For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil uh, thereof. Uh, do you think it is wise for Christians to save monies to take care of their burial expenses? I just want to hear what your thoughts are on that. And then I will ask, I will, I will ask that question in, a, in another vein. Go ahead. Do you, do you think that it is wise mm -hmm. that after your loved one has passed, that someone has to bury them for you. Mm, good question. Go ahead. You know, um, so I don't think that it, the, the scripture is telling us here that we must not make plans. Mm -hmm. um, that will be unwise. But I think the scripture is, is cautioning us here that we need to accept Christ to 
a level where we understand that he's leading is for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is not that we should be in a situation of lack of planning. Mm -hmm. So you can't tell me that <laughs> because you, you are working now, you should just work and go and cruise, spend money, don't save nothing for when you get ill, don't save nothing for when you pass away to, for the, so that they can put you in a casket. Yeah. You know, I always, as I'm, I'm laughing on this because <laughs> I told my family when I pass, don't go and go through this headache. <laughs> Wrap me up in a sheet and let this snap and tuna, let Pastor Ina get some snap and tuna to eat that. That is well fattened. You know, so, but at the same time, the scripture is helping us to understand here that we must have that level of relationship with God, mm -hmm. that with God that is so mature where we understand that everything is dependent upon God. But it is not telling us that we should negate the next day and not plan for the next mm -hmm. day. No, the scripture is not telling us to do such. Right, before I come to you, pa thank you, Pastor Peters. Before I come to you, Pastor Isaac, um, there's a comment there from Sister Stephen. She said, and some of us are too greedy. Everything we see, we want. No, not need, want. We need to be grateful and thankful because so much has its worst, so much has its worst than, than we. we may do. That is true. All right, so thank you very much for that submission. Pastor Isaac, now this is where your experience come into play there now as, as a senior pastor. Should Christians work two and three jobs going after money isn't that considered intemperance and greed? <laughs> Not necessarily. Two or three jobs. Hey, but Pastor, before I comment on that, I want to say something. Well, the go previous ahead. Um, question there. Um, people should plan, mm -hmm. and that text should not be used. You just said, don't take thought of tomorrow, meaning you, use, you just function, um, you know, without, without, without any thought, thought of mm -hmm. the morrow. Mm -hmm. Jesus was saying, don't let the future so consume you that you can't even function, you That's can't right. even think today. Because you're planning for tomorrow. So you need to plan. But I have a problem with some persons, I'm pastor. Go ahead. $20,000 is put away for Lacroix. For Lacroix. Have mercy. 20000 And they're sick now and they can't even eat properly. But they have that money put away mm. for Lacroix. Mercy, mercy. Um, and make it worse. <laughs> Nothing is put away for, for Jesus and the church. Mm. Have mercy. Go ahead. Yeah? Yeah. So Lacroix gets 20000 Okay. Or the undertaker. Mm-hmm. The Whoever church gets nothing. Mm -hmm. Jesus gets nothing. Mm -hmm. That is not good planning. So you, have, you should put away something so mm -hmm. that you do not live, especially in this culture. If you're on the, you know, the eastern side, I mean, you, bury t you die today, you bury tomorrow, and no yeah. expense. But yeah. this side, you know, the western side yeah. of the world, yeah. is big money. Yeah. So you, you, you have to put away something to ensure that something, that, that, that your family is not left worst off yeah. with your passing. Um, and, and to the question you asked me, mm -hmm. relative to, um, that, that was... Um, yeah, um, sh should Christians work two or three yeah, jobs um, going after yeah, money? Yeah, Pastor, someone can work two or three jobs, and that's only nine hours. Mm. Meaning, yeah. a two or three jobs doesn't mean that you're working 15 or uh, uh, 20 hours. Mm -hmm. You can have a, a job that is only three hours, and, and, and a job, next job, three hours. Three small jobs, nine hours, mm -hmm. um, and it barely making ends meet. Mm -hmm. So context de determine meaning. That's right. But if it's a situation where... You're working 16 hours, 18 hours. Yeah. There is no need for that. You could take care of your family with your eight years, but you're going after it. That's right. Yeah? You're going after it to, 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 um, to, to, to load it up then, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's not necessary. That's greed. Mm -hmm. Yes? You're killing yourself. That's right. For this. No, that, that's, not, that's not healthy. And that's not Christian anyway, because you're destroying yourself. Hmm. Pastor Peters, you want to say well, something on that? It should not be killing yourself mm -hmm. because there are some persons who, can, who cannot survive on one job. Mm -hmm. And we're speaking in the context of the U.S. More than likely, this doesn't apply here. Mm -hmm. But in the U.S., where persons have to do two and three jobs to pay the, 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 the expenses when the month comes. Mm -hmm. And even in Greenland, in some contexts, some persons have to do extra stuff to meet their, their, their demands. But it should not exceed that which God would have allotted unto us, where we are using the time that belongs to God to work to earn for yourself. And we're speaking in this context of his, of his Sabbath. Some persons want to go on and violate that as well. So I think once we stay within the domain that God would have blessed us with and, um, and we do not push too far, then, then that, that should be okay with the Christian man. And also I, I, I want to believe um, intemperance was also mentioned. And when you are most times intemperate, it takes a toll on your health. That is right. And so if the work causes your body to deteriorate, your health to get bad, and you should you know, check yourself as the senior, as I say, before you wreck right. yourself. You don't want... Um, that to happen to you at all. You know, as we come down to closer to home, I have a few Bible texts here that I want the pastors to, to attempt to answer. The first text I would ask you, Pastor Peters, right? I would ask you that text first, and then after, 
um, Pastor Isaac, and so on. So the, 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 the question first comes, finally, uh, can you please share your thoughts on the following passage? So the first uh, passage is Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 11, and it says, Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase, Pastor Peters. Give some thoughts on that. And, and that is so true, um, Pastor. Well, that is gotten by vanity shall be diminished, and mm -hmm. it does not mean, and it does not mean that because um, it is gotten by vanity in our time, mm -hmm. it means that that person will person will get poor in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. It does not speak to that idea, mm -hmm. but it speaks to the bigger idea mm -hmm. as to the eternal life. Yeah. Um. And and hence Matthew speaks in relation to that. I think that text was quoted before. Mm -hmm. It is it is easier for a camel to get through the eyes of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God because his his mind and focus is only on his wealth. Mm -hmm. But then the text didn't just start, stop there. But he that gathered by labor shall increase. increase in other words, when yeah. we are fear, fear and honest in our dealings, God will multiply the little that we have created and he will sustain us. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it all, once we are honest, we shall gain salvation, which is what all of us are hoping to gain one of these days. All right. And so Pastor Isaac, uh, the text for you is Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 22. And it says, he that, has, he that hasted to be rich at an evil eye, and consider it not that poverty shall come upon him. Give some thought on that one. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 22. He that hasted to be rich at an evil eye, and consider it not that poverty shall come upon him. Yeah, um, you know, the wise man is saying, don't be anxious to be rich. Mm -hmm. You see, when you're too anxious, you end up doing some ungodly stuff. That's right. Because the anxiety that you want to be rich. Mm -hmm. No, I, no, you should work diligently. And if you're a prudent person, you know, um, things will happen along yeah. the way. But when behind your head you're determined to be rich, you end up doing some ungodly things, um, taking some ungodly decisions. Because, you remember, your motive is to get rich. And that's what the wise man is saying. All right. Very good. Thank you. Pastor Peters, yes. Proverbs chapter 10. And verse 4, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Give some thought. In other words, um, in our local parlance, if you are lazy, um, do not use laziness as an, as an excuse to be poor. Mm -hmm. You must walk yourself out of poverty. Because the Bible says that, the continuation of that text, it says that, but the hand of the diligent make it rich. Mm -hmm. In other words, I mean, if you are willing and able and you are putting your minds towards it and you are working, then more than likely you will step, find yourself out of this po poverty situation. Even if you grow in it, it should not be an excuse to remain in it. Mm -hmm. You must put on, take off the lazy cap, get willing, get your hand on some work, and, and get yourself in the, into the realm where we can own, earn something. God is all about us using our, the mind that he would have given us here to use logically to earn a living. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't be living by mommy and daddy and say you don't have money, you can't build a little house. Get your lazy self up, work, <laughs> and get a full post up in our <laughs> local balance. All right. So, you know, this text, remember the discussion today had to do with the Christian and finance. And the final text, I would like both of you to give um, a comment on, on this text. It comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, uh, verses 9 and 10. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruit of all then increase, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and thy press shall burst out with new wine. Pastor Enoch and then uh, Pastor Peters. Yeah, um, well, the Christian should ensure that you honor God with your monies, and that is by whatever his word requires of us, mm -hmm. to recognize him. He's the one who gave us strength and health and, you know, um, to, do, to work. So we honor God by respecting him, by, by giving what is due to him and also his other creatures. Mm -hmm. And, and that, is the, that is the highway um, that you pave for further and continual blessing, mm -hmm. by honoring God. Mm -hmm. You see, when we, uh, some people think when you honor God, you lose. So it's like you can't give God that money because you lose out. No, you don't lose out. We don't lose out. We are blessed much more when we honor God. I, I, oftentimes we do not stop to tell God thanks for what we, he would have blessed us with. And the mere fact that we have the ability to work and to earn and to create a living, it is because of the grace and power of God that we are able to do so. But sometimes we forget God in the whole mix. Mm -hmm. in the whole mix. And the principle of tithing is, is, is um, embedded in this text as well. 
that God must first be recognized on whichever way. That is whichever way he would have demanded us to, to remember him. So mm -hmm. we must honor God in, in everything, Ella. Only when we honor God, we can definitely say that we are in tune with God. Mm -hmm. And I think it is our prerogative, priority to honor God in irrespective of, of what and, and, and who. God must be supreme, God must be center, and he must be first recognized in our benefits. Thank you both kindly. You know, as you were talking there, and as we come to an end, the thought just came to my mind um, that also, you know, as parents, or those of us, you know, parents, well, for those of you parents, it is also important that you teach your children um, how to properly manage, you know, finances and so forth from a very young age. Teach them the importance of or the role of God in them having and, and why it is important to give back to God. So, in essence, though, while you yourself may understand the concept very well, you are actually teaching your child or as well to understand the concept of the Christian and finances and how finances, the role of financing their life and how to manage their monies and the role of God in supplying finances and so forth. So I just thought to say to the parents today, you know, it is important as well for you to just teach your children how to work hard. You know, when they ask for things, you don't just always give them. You, you know, let them do a little work, you know, and right. you reward them and so forth and teach them how to properly manage their finances and also to be faithful to God. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, um, viewers online, I thank you all. We noticed all of the comments. Um, the last comment um, by Alexander, Yulene Alexander says, I agree with you. And so we thank you very much, you know, for spending the time today with us, for participating, for putting your comments in the chat, you know, and so on. And of course, Pastor's Corner, as I said in the beginning, is done for the benefit of the members and those viewing where we discuss pertinent topics so that members and those of you viewing can have a better understanding as it pertains to the subject matter in discussion. And so as we bring today's curtain down, we have a promotional video immediately after I pray. And um, I pray God's blessings upon you. Remember, um, we encourage you to always tune in to the different services that is broadcast on our Mission Life platform as we continue to spread the gospel of Jesus throughout the tri-island state of Grenada, Karakou, and Piti Matni, and the world by extension. Let us bow our heads, gentlemen, as we pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your goodness, your mercies, and your love towards us. Dear God, as we continue to live, we pray that today's program will help us to be more responsible when it comes to the area of finance and our Christian responsibility. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless us, provide for us, dear God, and give us that faithfulness so that we would know in all things we are to give you honor and praise, even in our finances as well. So bless us and keep us and bless the online viewers. And we thank you for them and for their, their commitment to continue to view and support our programs. Add a financial blessing to their life and keep us all by your grace. And most of all, save us when you come. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen and amen. Have a wonderful remainder of the week, everyone. And remember... God loves you. Hello, my name is Samora Bess. The Men's Ministry Department of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists has planned for each and every one of us as men. August the 21st at the campsite, beginning 10 a.m. You may ask what? It's a day of fun and fellowship. Come, enjoy cricket football, good games, food and fun. Come and enjoy the fellowship. Come, come and have fun as we celebrate our manhood. Looking forward to seeing you there.